Friday, May 5. Here's a quick and easy way to look at the 70-week prophecy of Daniel 9, 24-27. First, there are the 70 weeks in verse 24. Next, there are seven weeks and 62 weeks or 69 weeks of verse 25 of the 70 weeks. There's the last week, the 70th week in verse 29. And finally, that last week is divided in the middle of the week in verse 27 into two three and a half year sections. That's it. 70 weeks, which are composed of 69 weeks and one week, and that one week is divided in half. Just plug in the date 459 BC at the beginning, and with simple math, yes, we come to 1844 on the timeline. Also, in describing the 2,300 days, Daniel 8 never said when the 2,300 days began. Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed, it said in Daniel 8.14. Unto 2,300 days, from what time? Why not from the time when Daniel had the vision itself, the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar in Daniel 8 verse 1? That doesn't work. The vision in Daniel 8 didn't include Babylon. It started with kingdoms after it, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome, up to the end. Why date an event? The cleansing of the sanctuary, which is in the vision, from an event, the reign of the kingdom of Babylon, which is not? The starting date for the climax of the vision should come from within the vision itself, which started with Medo-Persia and extends to the end. That's a lot of years. Which one began it? We are not told in Daniel 8. We are told in Daniel 9. And that brings us to our three discussion questions for this week. 1. In class, discuss the close relationship between the gospel and judgment as seen in these two parts of what is really one prophecy. Why is the link between the two such good news for us? How should this link help alleviate the fear that many have had regarding the idea of judgment? 2. Dwell more on the truth revealed in Daniel 9.26 that the Messiah was cut off but not for himself. What is this about? For whom was he cut off and why? And 3. Read again Leviticus 16.16 16 and Leviticus 23.26-29. Talk about the reason for the cleansing of the sanctuary in Leviticus 16.16 16 and how the people were supposed to act when it happened in chapter 23 verses 26-29. What is the relationship between what happened then and what it should mean for us today? Leviticus 16.16 16, So he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel, and because of their transgressions, for all their sins, and so he shall do for the tabernacle of meeting which remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And chapter 23 of Leviticus, beginning at verse 26, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also the tenth day of this seventh month shall be the day of atonement, it shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And you shall do no work on that same day, for it is the day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For any person who is not afflicted in soul on that same day shall be cut off from his people. And so the question remains, what is the relationship between what happened then and what it should mean for us today? And now for Inside Story with Sibylla. Thank you, Sibylla. Ukrainian Miracle by Andrew McChesney Ten-year-old Anna struggled in his classes amid an ongoing torrent of bullying in public school in Odessa, Ukraine. His skin was darker than the other children's and his classmates made fun of him. He lived with his Ukrainian grandmother after being left at her home by his mother, a former Seventh-day Adventist. His father wasn't a Christian and lived far away in Iran. Grandmother didn't like the way that Annas was being treated at school. Upset over the bullying, she finally transferred the boy to the local Seventh-day Adventist school. At first, Annas was withdrawn and spoke little, but he loved the Bible classes so much that he tried to remember the teacher's words by whispering them as he heard them in the classroom. 
As the days and weeks passed, he began to open up and make jokes. The other children enjoyed his wit, and he soon became the class clown. He received his very own Bible. His mother was furious when she learned that Annis was attending the Adventist school, and she took him away from Grandmother to live with her. She refused to speak with Grandmother, and she taught Annis at home. Grandmother prayed for God to intervene. She prayed every day for a year. After some time, Mother began speaking to her again, and they became friends again. One day, Mother agreed to Grandmother's suggestion to meet with an Adventist pastor. Annis listened to the conversation, and he learned his surprise that three of his friends from the Adventist school were going to be baptised. I also want to be baptised, he exclaimed. Mother was surprised. The pastor was surprised. They asked Annis some questions. It turned out that he had been studying the Bible on his own during the year that he had been living with Mother. More than anything, he wanted to be baptised. His fervent desire to give his life to Jesus touched Mother's heart. She gave her consent. Two weeks later, Mother and Grandmother watched as the 11-year-old boy was baptised with his three friends from the Adventist school. It was a miracle facilitated by God and Adventist education, said Ivan Rapalov, Education Director for the Euro-Asian Division, whose territory includes Ukraine. There was not only a reconciliation of the family, but also a reconciliation with God, he said. Thank you for your Sabbath School mission offerings that support Seventh-day Adventist education around the world. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.